So we were talking today about the Soweto Uprising, which was in mid-June of 1976. Your goal for the screencast is that when you're done, you should be able to explain both the causes of the Soweto Uprising as well as the impact of the Soweto Uprising. So keep that in mind as you are watching. This is a map of South Africa, and as you can see, Soweto is circled in red on it. Here's a more zoomed-in view. This is of the Gauteng province, um, and Soweto, as you can see, is right here. And it is southwest of Johannesburg, which is the largest city in South Africa, and Pretoria, which is the capital. So, what is Soweto? That's a good question. Uh, Soweto stands for the Southwest Townships. Um, these were the black living areas that were southwest of Johannesburg. Remember, during apartheid, uh, one of the apartheid ruling tactics was to control where people could live and how they could move. And so, what, so what Soweto was, was a township where blacks were allowed to live, um, very crowded, uh, relatively poor, um, and uh, it was it was kind of the, the forced living area as the whites lived in the city of Johannesburg. Black South Africans were forced to live in townships outside of Johannesburg, and Soweto was the largest of those southwest of the city of Johannesburg. So some context, uh, black South African students were unhappy about the language of instruction in schools. They didn't like the fact that half of their instruction by law was supposed to be in Afrikaans. You might say, why is this? Well, Afrikaans, as you may remember, was the language of the Afrikaner or the Boer people. These were the folks who were uh, oppressing the black South Africans and ruling them. So they weren't too thrilled about that. They also weren't thrilled about the fact that they didn't get asked at all about what language they were taught in. The white Boer uh, minister of black South African education, this dude, Punt Janssen, uh, said that essentially he didn't care what the black South Africans thought about what language they got taught in, um, didn't ask them, and didn't have any plan to. His direct quote, as you can see, is right there. So early on, uh, students at a uh, high school in Soweto went on strike in late April, about a month and a half before the Soweto Uprising, and they were unhappy about being taught in Afrikaans, and slowly these strikes spread throughout Soweto to other high schools. Finally, on June 16th, uh, a group of students left their school to head to a soccer stadium on strike again, and police tried to stop the students on the way, and shots ended up being fired by the police. 23 people were killed on the first day, uh, 21 students and two white police officers. Some photos of those protests are forthcoming here. And this is the most famous image of the Soweto Uprising, um, these images of students running away from the violence of the white government and this, this student carrying a younger, a younger student who actually died in his arms. Um, this image in particular went all across the world and was very powerful in kind of building support for black South Africans' cause. So throughout South Africa, there were riots and confrontations between black South Africans, black South Africans, particularly younger students and the white government. Uh, there was, was widespread condemnation of the violence that the police had used, and anti-apartheid groups, uh, and again, remember there were a whole lot more of these, really worked hard. They saw the power of students in terms of organizing against apartheid, and they really worked hard to start to get some of those students involved in their organizations. Within the anti-apartheid movement, um, prior to Soweto, there was widespread sabotage by black South Africans in an attempt to end white rule. Um, after Soweto, there were months of riots, and there wasn't a transition in tactics like after Sharpeville, but the sabotage in the 16 years after Sharpeville hasn't really improved anything. Black South Africans aren't better off despite the fact that they've moved from nonviolence to targeted sabotage, and arguably things could have gotten worse. And there's a whole different range of groups that had different beliefs and different visions of justice for South Africa's future, including some people talking about outright violence against the white government. So your goal for the screencast was to explain both the causes and the impact of the Soweto Uprising. If you can do that, great. If not, head back and rewatch sections of the screencast. Thanks.